Hey guys, get ready with me for my family friend's wedding. I'm just going to be talking about lessons I've learned in my relationship. I've been married for six years, four months, and I dated my husband for four years before that. And I'll put a card above so you can just check out the video on how we met and how I knew he was the one. So yeah, I'm going to be doing my makeup. I've done my brows already off camera. Now I'm just going to put some eyeshadow. The color of the day is like burgundy. Burgundy and pink. I'm just going to put this. So number one lesson I'll say is you have to respect your partner regardless of the age difference. So even if he's older or you're older, respect is so important. Don't disrespect your partner in front of people. That is like really wrong. Even if you're upset, just try and control your temper and hold it in and express yourself when you get home. But yeah, respect is very important. And I might just like leave Bible verses that sort of buttress the point I'm talking about. So this is a VBT palette. Yeah, just a basic matte eyeshadow. So I'm going for this wedding. It's a traditional wedding. It's in VI, but the after party is in Ikoi. And then I'm going to watch this short film also in VI that's showing at 7. It's currently like 4.20. And the reception has not yet fully started. I'm going to do my liner and then come back. So I've done my liner, even though I did sort of make it a lot thicker than I would have wanted. But I had already started beginning of this eye thick so i had to make it all thick anyways i'm using a beauty blender i'm just wetting it i'm using the beauty by ad foundation i'm in the shade bad 10 this is what it looks like so yeah respect and just be so mindful of your words because words once uttered cannot be taken back like sometimes if you're too angry don't talk because People don't forget things. You know how they say forgive and forget? I forgive, but I don't forget. So just be very mindful of your words when you guys are having an argument or disagreement. You know how they say trust is like a mirror and once broken, like you can't fix a mirror. You can't build back trust, but words once spoken will never be forgotten. Even if you take it back, even if you apologize, it will still be remembered. So... Be very mindful of your words when you are having an argument. Speak with kindness. No double standards, you know. If you want your partner to get you a card and a present on your birthday every year, also do the same. <laughs> Don't be a hypocrite. Don't expect something and not be willing to give it as well. Guys, I know my all back is so rough. So I was supposed to play at the wedding, actually. But my performance got cancelled at the last minute, which meant I got to have a lion and do other things today. So I went for this Lady Biba sale. I also washed and deep conditioned my hair, stretched it and I did all back myself. My all back skills are not the best. But it's only for three days, so that's why I didn't really fuss. Another lesson I would say is pray together. Like, even do this before you get married. Pray together. Pray with each other. Pray for each other. Because, like the Bible says, one can put to flight a thousand, two can put to flight ten thousand. Life is not a bed of roses. There would always be issues. And prayer just makes you feel at peace and not worry too much. I would also say, if you're a Christian or a Muslim, so I'm a Christian, so I'm just going to talk from a Christian's perspective, but I will say it's important to go to church and to go in physically. I'm just letting this concealer sit for a bit. So during COVID, most of us started doing online church. And after COVID, many of us didn't go back to church or it took a while for us to go back to church. Now, there's a lot of value that comes with community. So we used to go to a really big church. Like we went to that church for five years. We moved to that church when I was pregnant. Very good church. I love the church. I love the pastor. I love the word. I love the music. I love the fact that there's testimonies every week. But they have three services every Sunday. It's a huge church. There's probably like maybe 4,000 people that come there every Sunday. So it's not as easy for you to like access the pastor or talk to him or the leadership if you have any issues. Like I think it's important for people to belong to a church where you actually know the pastor can communicate with the leaders quickly or easily and have access to them like have their numbers so if there's any wala you can just call and talk i also think it's important for everyone to have like a mentor or someone above them that they respect that they can talk to if there's any issues because i think a lot of marriages that are breaking down these days is because of lack of communication and sometimes people just let 
pride get to them and are not willing to talk things out calmly and sometimes they might not even be able to like address it themselves it might be better to address it with a third party like a pastor or a counselor or something i think it's very important to belong to a church and like be consistently going to church especially if you have kids most of us grew up following our parents to church and there's value in that there's value in community there's value in having that schedule that routine going somewhere where you're learning and also like bonding with other people like i said life is filled with ups and downs and sometimes you would need people to pray for you so it's nice to have a community to fall back on like you know your prayer group that you can talk to so for example we started like church shopping in march visiting different churches probably visited like five six and before we finally decided that you know this is the church we want to belong to it's intimate the world is solid the music is good and there's that community feel like there's fellowship they even do the football tournament <laughs> totally play that and it's the little things like growing up i had church friends like my parents are pastors my parents live in ireland our church was on the mainland growing up and as pastors they're there after church doing their meetings and all so we would go to like church friends house is and like play playstation and even till now i'm still super close to some of the people i went to church with growing up and it's just nice to have like family friends outside of your mom's classmates children and maybe people you went to school with. like having that church community is nice and i wanted that for my son so when I took light and brought it back, I just dimmed my light a bit. I know this blush is looking too much. I use the Beauty by AD blush. This is what happens when you do makeup in the dark. So I mix two colors. It's more true, it's more true. Let me put my setting powder. So I'm using the Younger Beauty setting powder in the shade Custard with the powder puff. And they say like rub it on your bed before. So you're talking about the importance of going to church and belonging to a church community and yeah so i went to america last month to play the sax and i've been playing the sax for what 15 years but this was such a like huge deal i'm being invited to play in another country and then paying for my flight and i played in two cities i played in baltimore at the concert with like 1500 people like a lot of people and then i played in chicago it's a smaller church and i put a link to my administration so i'll link to that in the color box i got the call on wednesday and i was traveling on a monday so i didn't have that much time to prepare i was anxious and i'm typically not someone that gets nervous but something they do in my church is after the service, they're like if you have any prayer and you want the prayer team to pray with you <clears throat> you can meet them after church and i did that and it made me feel a lot better yeah so it's nice to have people you can pray with i also think it's very important to pray for wisdom to make the right decisions because I feel like as adults, there's so many decisions we're faced with. Especially, I feel like for me, it was from when they proposed to me that I just had to start making serious decisions. We are which wedding planner. Where will I buy my wedding dress from? Who will do my makeup? Where will we live? Okay, we found a house. Where are we buying our bed from? Where are we buying our cooker from? What brand should we buy? Now that you're pregnant, where should you give birth to this child? Which hospital? Okay, we've had the baby. Which nanny should I choose? Which school should I send this child to? Should I jump out? There's so many decisions we make as adults that affect so much, not just us, that would affect our children and their future. And it's just so important to pray for God to guide you when making these decisions. Another thing, keep your bedroom, which is like your sanctuary. This is so much. Keep it clean. Keep your home neat and clean and let it be a safe space, a sanctuary that you would always want to return back to. Now, my husband is the tidier one in this relationship, I won't lie. He's the building next week i am a creator sometimes we can deal with mess you know so yeah that's one thing i've had to learn to ensure that i keep our space clean and like keep my stuff <clears throat> off his side of the bed like it bothers him um, and i'm just like yo what's the big deal what if it is right it is his side it's important to respect your partner's perspective even if to you it's not that big a deal if you put your tea tray on his side if you put it closer to the door like little things now i'm using this ruby light setting spray called game over i definitely think this blush is too much i don't know what i'm going to do It'd be like they didn't punch me how am i gonna turn it down though i have to turn it down another lesson don't be judgmental nobody's perfect nobody's perfect everyone has their weaknesses everyone has their flaws and if while dating the flaw that your partner has or his weakness is something you can't stand, something you can't deal with. Some people are cheaters, some people are gamblers, some people are smokers, some people are drinkers. Don't assume that it's going to change or get better 
just because they've met you. Sometimes it does. Though. Some people meet a girl and they love her so much and she's not a fan of smoking, so they're able to give it up quickly. But some people, it's just not that simple and it's going to be a struggle or something they're going to deal with for years. And you know, if you can't stand it, then don't get my someone that is a serial smoker and is a habit they're trying to break and is irritating you and tearing you out. Like some things are more magnified or more in your face in marriage because you are now in the same space. So you marry a chatterbox that does not understand that sometimes you need to sound quiet. It's not a rule or it's not a law, but I just want to say that things do get more magnified or they're more present in my Like you're dealing with, with it more because you are in the same space. And that's what happened during COVID. A lot of relationships ended during COVID because prior to lockdown, people were going to work. So even if you are dealing with this thing, it's maybe only for three hours in the evening or whatever, not like for the full day. So just bear that in mind. But it's perfect. So everybody has their flaws, but... It's just like some people are more willing to work on theirs than others. And some flaws are not as detrimental as others. Because if someone is a serial gambler, you can gamble with your children's school fees. And what will you do? You know the cross that you, you can carry. Hey, well, don't know what this look is giving. Remember that you're both from two different backgrounds. You've had different opinions. You've had different experiences that have shaped you. So you might not have the same ideologies when it comes to everything. So you need to be accepting of other people's perspectives. Like you can't try and mold someone to be like you. Let your partner be himself or herself. Let them express themselves. Let them be who God has called them to be. You can pray to God for God to reveal to you what it is, thinks it's best for them. But do not try and force or mold someone into what you think they should be. Date nights are important. Prioritize quality time. Okay, so I've worn my top. So I put this gentle dove lipstick and then i put the fenty clear gloss like where i lined my lips and then i'm just going to use this beauty by Didi gloss for the center here's the wig i'm wearing i got it for my birthday so this stuff i'm actually wearing i wore it for my birthday during lockdown and i think i did like a birthday vlog like my sister came with did a sister tag and i'll link to that vlog share as in see babe see babe Prioritize quality time. Okay, you know, I'm actually going to hot comb this thing. Prioritize quality time. Or oh, I'm going to use a band. Prioritize quality time. Prioritize this night. Know your partner's love language. So there are five love languages. There's acts of service. There's gift giving. There's physical touch. There's words of affirmation. Know your partner's love language and speak to them in that language. So if they really value quality time and sure you make our time to spend quality time with them and vary it up like it can be netflix and chill this week it can be a cinema date the following week it can be a theater date it can be an activity like candle making or paint and say or painting a tote bag or pottery like just keep it spicy keep your relationship fresh vary things don't just be like in a boring routine where you just wake up eat go to work come back watch tv sleep like do activities go out together have like things that you like to do together for fun work out together find like a sport that you can do together whether it's going on walks or swimming or tennis like find stuff that you guys can do together and find stuff that you guys can do apart that also allows you bond with like your friendship group and have your own friendship group separate from their friendship group respect your in-laws <laughs> treat them with kindness and respect and Check up on them. Be honest about your feelings, your fears. Like have deep conversations where you can like evaluate things and just like talk honestly about how you feel about how the person is behaving. Like in a calm environment, there are all these like cards that you can use or like questions online that you can ask each other. And there's one Africa loving that they have at Latin Avengers, which is like my favorite bookstore. But yeah, do card games, do couples date night. Be appreciative be appreciative of the little things be appreciative of the big things like everyone wants to know that they are valued and appreciated and loved so don't just assume your partner knows that you appreciate them or that you love them actually say it not just with words verbally like you can write it down via text or in a card or send a voice note and if there's something that's like bugging you and maybe you've mentioned it a few times verbally but you feel like there's been no change write it down Send as a text, send as a voice note. You can write a long message so the guy or the girl know that you're actually really stressed that it's stopping you. Understand that everyone communicates differently and some people, after an argument, they want to hash things out immediately. Other people need to calm down before they can express themselves properly. So understand that and 
be willing to compromise and make sacrifices for the other person. It shouldn't just be one person making sacrifices all the time. Like if your own favorite fast food is Burger King and his own is McDonald's, then this will be Burger King, then next will be McDonald's. And don't marry someone you're not attracted to for passing said by. Chemistry is important. And the final thing, because I need to get going for this wedding, finally be sensitive of your partner's feelings. Listen to the little things that they're saying, subtle hints that they drop. Like they can say, ah, man, this bag is so cute. I want this bag with my wish list. You can get it for them for their next birthday or for anniversary or for Valentine's. Like make these dates notable make them special not going to do past yourself like if your budget is 100k don't go and be trying to do something that's 500k or 700k and then you now be in debt or you now be snappy because you spend so much and you're now broke and you don't know how you're going to pay your bills and all of that no do past yourself but just mark it with a cute intentional gifts that you know your partner will appreciate be mindful of like the time of the month be mindful of day you know, some dates might be sensitive to your partner because maybe they lost a family member on that date or it just brings back bad memories. Like, note things down. So you remember things about your partner, their favorite color, their favorite food, and their favorite sports team. Like, if their team loses, they might be in a bit of a mood. So don't be angry if they snap at you and try and make them feel better. So yeah, I hope this helps. I hope this is valuable in some way. I pray we all have happy relationships that stand the test of time. And... I will say when dating, date with intentionality and when your partner proposes, ensure that you do counselling because I think marriage counselling is so important. The conversations that you would have if you are counselled in a church that knows what they're doing or by people that know what they're doing. The conversations that you will have that you might never have had in your years of dating that are important. So for example, you might want three kids or four kids and he wants two kids or the other way around typically because the woman is doing the work like don't just say we go rough and when you know there's already something fundamental that you guys do not agree on check your blood group know your genotype and phenotype and do the right thing so that your children don't have to go through pain that they don't need to yeah i think that's it from me so i would say when you get engaged do counseling before you even set your wedding date that's my own advice so that you are sure that this is what you want to actually do don't be in a rush to set your wedding dates to counseling and get to know each other thoroughly like have those deep uncomfortable conversations they're necessary to be had because it's better a broken relationship than a broken marriage like sometimes people do have to get divorces because of abuse or just because it's not working you guys don't have the same mindset or ideologies and it's just not working so yeah try and have these conversations beforehand so you don't have to go through the stress of divorce and the emotional pain and mental ache and all of that so yeah that's it for me Hey, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And I forgot to add, if you want to know what the final look looks like, check out my Instagram because I'm actually wearing an Ashoki skirt that is on my gilly from my traditional wedding that I converted to a skirt. We did a family shoot, I think it's 2021, where we wore that traditional wedding outfit. So I'll link to that video above. But yeah, my outfit is cute. Hey. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned a thing or two. This is not an exhaustive or comprehensive list. It's just me sharing some things I've learned over the years and also things I've learned from observing people as well. I hope you find love with someone who is deserving of you. And if you have been deceived or betrayed by someone in the past, I hope you heal and I hope you give love a chance again. I haven't really done a video like this before, so I would appreciate your feedback. Thank you.